Well, it is my pleasure today to be here with Dr. Kristen Beasley. Thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome. Glad <laughs> to be here. So we are both in Phoenix at the time where it is finally starting to feel like fall. In the mornings, at least. <laughs> yeah. For about an hour. <laughs> All right. Will you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, let's see. Um... My husband and I have been involved in full-time ministry for a long, long time. Um, came to Christ. I came to Christ in the 70s. I'm okay. an adult convert, and so is my husband. And um, we've been on a, uh, an incredible journey with the Lord for many years. Hmm. But we ended up being in full-time ministry starting in the 80s, late 80s. And are at this point, um, I would say semi-retired. We're not really retired. I don't think when you walk with the Lord, you ever retire. <laughs> but we have we have cut back on our responsibilities. My husband was outreach pastor at Scottsdale Bible Church for you know many years, eighteen to twenty years. Um, I was um, dean of women at Phoenix Seminary for ten years where I developed classes, um, did a Women with Vision conference for 14 years, involved mentoring uh, women students. So I had a, a variety of responsibilities at the seminary. And then since that time, uh, we have joined an organization called OCI, okay. which is One Challenge International, and okay. it, uh, as part-time missionaries. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a yeah, lot that totally. you've done. <laughs> it's a mouthful. <laughs> but it's a lifetime, right? Like that, it's right. not something that you all did at once. It's a oh, development no. of where God took you. That's right. <laughs> so you had a, a spiritual journey that took a lot of turns in your young age. And yeah. can you kind of share a little bit of your story up until the point where you met Jesus? Oh, wow. <clears throat> well, um, I was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay. And what? what? I said, What's okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Um, the land of, of cheese and the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> and um, uh, fourth of four children, I was, um, I had a, I have a brother and two older sisters. Um. And I don't know if any, anybody listening has heard the phrase, children should be seen and not heard. These days, that's not really a common expression, but when I was growing up, it was something that people said. Yeah. And they said it not only in churches, but in schools and, and uh, even in the family. I was, like I said, I was the fourth of four. So, um, you know, uh, the fourth of four kids, what yeah. does that tell you? That tells you uh, you're the low person on the totem pole. Um, everybody says the fourth child, the last child is the spoiled child. That may have been true for me, but it was also true that everybody else in my family thought I didn't know anything because I was the youngest. So my sisters and brother kind of like, you're you know, you're just the baby of the family. You don't know what's going on. So I, not that my parents intended this, but I kind of grew up with this idea that um, I didn't know much mm. um, and maybe I wasn't that smart and um, children are supposed to be seen and not heard. Well, guess what? I like to talk. <laughs> I am guilty. A <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I am a verbal person. And so it kind of flew in the face of who God made me to be. Hmm. So I kind of grew up confused about who I was supposed to be from the world's or what I interpreted the world was saying to me. Mm -hmm. So that kind of left me in a state of confusion. Hmm. Um, I went to a parochial school for um, grade, part of grade school and high school. And that's supposed to set you on your path regarding a religion or belief in God. And although I believed in God, uh, 
I didn't really know him. And I didn't, I didn't know that I didn't know him until <clears throat> I got late high school, early college, and I was adrift, didn't know who I was, didn't know where I was going. I didn't know if God was real or if you could know him. So my mind was filled with a lot of questions. Hmm. And, and uh, in a quandary, I, I, my parents divorced when I was 13. That also added some difficulties in, in my life and in my view of who I was. And I was kind of mad at the world for a while. Hmm. So um, I had a lot of, a lot of dissonance in my life. Um, and you're saying, you asked me to just talk about to the point that I received Christ. Well, I went through a stage of rebellion. Um, I got into college and it was during the early, late 60s, early 70s. I know that sounds like ancient history, <laughs> but our, our country was in flux at that time, anti-Vietnam War yeah. uh, protests. And, and, um, and yes, even then there were protests against discrimination against Black people. Mm -hmm. I was all for it. Anything I could protest about, I... I protested. I was protesting life. So um, that brings me to a point, uh, kind of at a crisis point of kind of searching. Can, can I really know God? I was uh, exposed to the idea of God as a, as a kid. Yeah. And, and it seemed right but I didn't, I couldn't get how you could know. And so that really bothered me. So I started searching. I, I was reading books and I even took a philosophy class in, in college, which was really uninspiring. <laughs> <laughs> I did not like it. They just left me more confused. Hmm. I took psychology classes. I'm trying to understand who you are that to kind of like, could we get to a bottom line here about who we are? Yeah. Nobody seemed to be able to do that. Yeah. And so all this question asking that you, that you kind of ventured into, uh, I know you, you told me earlier that, that the one thing that it didn't result in was a clear cut answer and a nice little box with a ha happy little bow on top. Um, right. so what did it reveal to you about God and about who God had created you to be. Wow. Um, it revealed to me that God was a lot bigger than anybody was talking about. Mm. And, and there was an element missing in everything I was searching for. And that was the element of taking a step of faith to believe. And I just wanted to jump to, I know. I wanted oh. somebody to spell it out for me and tell me what I could know. And nobody knew. Um, my husband and I used to have conversations before we were married. He was anti, uh, post Vietnam also. He spent a year in Vietnam. And so he had his own identity crises to go through. Mm. And I, I used to ask him questions. I said, what do you think happens to you when you die? And he said, I don't know, nothing. Put you in the ground. I said, that's it? Like, like a chicken? You just, that's it? You just bury him? Yeah, what else? You know, and, and that's mm -hmm. where he was. He was very agnostic. He didn't know. Yeah. And I thought, that, that's not right. I can't believe that. Hmm. Humanity seems so different from every other creature on this planet. So um, again, I, I came to these, these walls where, like you said, I'm not going to get just a, a pat answer that I can stick in a box. There was a lot of unknowing of hmm. unknown. And um, we moved to Oregon and we uh, got a foster daughter. 
And our foster daughter and I were driving into town one day and there was a movie marquee and it said, the movie title was A Time to Run. And my foster daughter who was committed to running away from things thought, wow, that sounds like a great movie, let's go. And I thought, I'm gonna take her because mm -hmm. I know it's not about that. It was a Billy Graham oh. <laughs> movie. And so I knew it wasn't going to be about running away. So I thought, yeah. oh, I'll trick her. I'll take her to the movie. So I took her. And at the end of the movie, now, I don't know anybody that's done this in the last 30 years. Um, somebody came up in front of, of the screen and said, um, anybody who wants to know Jesus, come forward. Mm. And I thought, no, I just brought my foster daughter to this movie. So I'm kind of telling her, this is a good thing. I'm stuck here. I have to go forward. So I told my foster daughter, I have to, I have to walk forward. She got upset and left the theater. And I walked forward and a lady met me there. And she started telling me what it meant to become a Christian and I didn't really know what she was talking about, but I just agreed with her so that I could leave. But what I was saying in my head was, okay, God, I'm stepping forward. If you're real, you need, it's, please reveal yourself to me because I'm doing my part. I don't know what else to do. I'm looking to see if you're really there. Mm -hmm. That was the beginning of my Christian life. Hmm. And like you said, it wasn't wrapped up in a bow. I had a lot to learn. I was still very confused about a lot of things, but there was something that happened to me that night and it was called peace. Wow. It was like, okay, I, I just felt really good about what I had done. Hmm. At the time I did not connect it with going to church. Okay. I just wanted to know if I knew God Yeah. and and I felt like internally, like I had done something to move forward towards him. And now I was going to see if he responded back to me. Hmm. That was the beginning of my Christian life. And I could go on, but I went through a lot of changes. Yeah. I went through a lot of changes. And, and, one of the biggest changes was this lady that I met invited me to church. I came to church with her. Like I said, I, I wouldn't have equated knowing Christ with, with going to church, mm -hmm. but she invited me and I thought, okay, I'll do it again. I'll step forward. I'm going to yeah. see what happens. And um, something kind of miraculous happened because now I was going to church and they were preaching the Bible but now I was hearing it like I had never heard it before. Mm. I mean, I read the Bible when I was in high school because I was in a Lutheran school. Okay. But I didn't understand what I was reading. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden light bulbs were going off and it was like, I had no idea that was in there. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's one reason why we have to keep reading scripture, right? Because even if you have been you know, like you said, in a church, or even if your church is a, a good, healthy, Bible-believing church, you're still going to see scripture through different eyes in different parts of your life. Yep. Um, I'm, you know, I'm glad that your story led to you being in a church. And, but this is going through my mind of, I know that some people's stories is with, the church in general is, yes, I had so many questions and I got in trouble for asking too many questions, but it seems like that's just like literally a part of your nature. So once yeah. you went into the church, did you find that or yeah. yes? Well, listen, no. Okay. Listen, no. Um, they had little cards in the back of the seats or the pews and, and the, and the pastor would give a sermon and the little card said, um, sign up to do whatever, whatever. Well, instead of signing up, I would just say, uh, you just said this this morning and I don't understand why, why blah, 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 question, question, question. 
and I'd put my name down and I'd turn it in. And I did that <laughs> almost every week. Uh, but you just said this, and I don't understand what that means, mm. question mark, blah, 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 my name. I'd turn it in every week. The church called. This was a, not a large church, maybe six to 800. Somebody called me and said, you know, we'd like to invite you to get into a small group mm. where we do a Bible study. And I thought, oh, I don't know if I want to do that. Plus, my husband at that point was not a Christian. Okay. And um, I kind of weird for me to like go by myself. But I thought, okay, I was on this journey. I was on this quest. So I said, okay, I'll do it. So I went to this Bible study. I don't know if anybody's have ever had this kind of experience, but it was all couples and me. Mm. And every we single were- person that's listening to you, this is going, amen. I, I've been there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You feel a little weird. Okay. So they were trying to be nice, but they weren't, in my view at that time, they weren't serious. Mm. I had a lot of questions. They were having their little uh, fun event, get together, group time. And I came home from that and I thought, oh, that is not for me. Hmm. Nobody seems to be really serious about trying to understand what's going on with God and whatever, whatever, you know. So um, I didn't go back. Okay. So God bless this church. They called me again and they said, um, you know, maybe, maybe what would be better for you would be if you just met with like one person. And what they were talking about was kind of like a disciple relationship. Yeah. So I met this woman at church. Um, They said, it's going to be, you know, we're thinking of this lady, Sandra. She lives in your neighborhood and, and she would be happy to meet with you. Okay. Okay. So I met her at church and, and I thought to myself, she is everything I never wanted to be. She seemed like a really nice lady. This process is going really well. (laughs) Yeah, this is going great. I'm out there trying to figure out who I am and and be independent. And I am woman, hear me roar. And she is a stay-at-home mother of two kids Mm. who never went to college. Um, Just really sweet. But um, I just felt like we are miles apart from who we are. Yeah. Right. Okay. So there again, I'm thinking, I don't know this. this, this, Okay. I'll meet with her. I keep putting one foot in front of the other one. I thought I am on a quest here, you know? (laughs) So I start meeting with her. Well, guess what? She and I have become lifelong Mm. friends. Wow. She discipled me for three years. Wow. I met her every week we would meet sometimes for an hour sometimes all morning hmm. um, at when we were first married my husband and I were dirt poor we didn't even have a washer and dryer in our house we had to go to the laundromat and she had a washer and dryer so I would hmm. take my clothes up to her house and I'd throw a load in and we'd sit down and start talking about stuff open the bible I'd put my clothes in the dryer put another load in we'd keep talking and because she was a stay-at-home mom, she had the flexibility to just be there, right? Yeah, yeah. What a huge blessing for me. Yeah. Well, she may have been miles apart from me when I first met her of what I thought she was and what I thought I was, but she had a real depth of mm-hmm. commitment to the Lord and understood the scriptures and I could bring her any question and it didn't frazzle her and it didn't bother her. She would, she said years later, after we we reminisce about it, she'd say, Oh yeah, you'd give me questions. She said, I am after those pastors every week and <laughs> my theology books and trying to figure out how to answer you for the next time we mm, get together. Yeah. You know, I had, I had a lot of big questions. I'd read something. I say, what does that mean? blood why do we need blood why is it the blood of the lamb i don't get what's that about you know we had to talk about all that stuff 
but it didn't scare. So there's where I got grounded. Yeah. There's where my life opened up. Hmm. But along with that, I had kind of an identity crisis because I was in college. I was trying to figure out who I was and the world was saying, um, uh, something totally different from what God, God's word was saying about what a, what a woman is. Yeah. And, and I couldn't put them together in my own mind. And I think I told you one time when we were talking that I was still going to the university and trying to finish my degree, um, which I ha had given up on. I was okay. frustrated. But my husband encouraged me to go back to school and finish. Mm. Uh, good for him. <laughs> um, seriously, yeah. I needed that encouragement. And I took a class that I thought would um, combine my interest in, in Christianity and knowing God and trying to understand who I was. Mm. And it was offer... I, I, it was an independent study course that I designed, got approved by my advisor under the women's studies program. And um, <laughs> so I used that opportunity to try to figure out who God said a woman was. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I know I, it's different. Um, I'm a very logical person and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a thinker. Obviously I we've talked about that. Yeah. I'm like your son. I love to read. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm always reading stuff and, uh, trying to figure stuff out. I have a curious mind. That's the way God made me. Yeah. It took me a long time to see that about myself. Hmm. I didn't just wake up one morning and say, Oh, you are just such a curious person. <laughs> no. They're always telling you, you need to be a lifelong listen or a lifelong learner. Right. So that's what yeah. you're being. Yeah. 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 And that is what I am. Mm. That is one of my key. Um, it, I wouldn't say it's my key identity. My key identity comes in Christ, but hmm. it's, it's one of um, the hallmarks of who God made me to be. It's uh. one of my natural talents. Let's put it that way. There you go. Yeah. And you did more research on this, um, on who God created you to be and God created women to be. And you actually wrote a book about it. Uh, can you tell yeah. us the name of that book? Yes. It's called, who do you think you are? Perfect name for it. <laughs> Cause that was given to me a few times growing up. Mm. Who do you think you are? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and be quiet right you know yeah and who do you think you are? and how can we find that book before we move on and talk about it and talk what's inside it how could we find that book well um you could look it up on amazon but i don't encourage people to do that anymore i don't really use it i'd rather send it's a lot cheaper to get it directly from me okay perfect and how can and, we contact you and um well probably through my email address Okay. So, which we'll put it, in the show notes. Okay. Yeah. So people will have to look up those show notes, <laughs> to find it. but, um, email me, I answer my emails. I'd be happy to send it to whomever. This mm -hmm. is one of my, this is probably, I would say my primary calling mm -hmm. in life is for women to know who they are. Yeah. Um, it, it really ties into my mission statement and it's, it's something that doesn't go away. I've, I've tried to kind of walk away from it at times, but it keeps coming back and there's nothing that enthuses me more than to help women understand who God has made them to be, which is what the book is about. Mm -hmm. It's what I've spent uh, many years praying, thinking, studying, and living out because of my own femaleness and understanding my identity before the Lord. So um, I'm so eager for women to read, to learn, and to grow in their knowledge of who God is and who they are that I will give them a book yeah. if they will write to me. Hmm. Okay, so we talk about that uh, you know, who do you think you are? And I, I want you to give us like a peek into, um, you know, what you share with women in the book, because I think that 
for us as women, we take on a lot of roles and yeah. some roles are assigned to us. I think even at birth, like I'm the oldest. So, you know, there's a lot, you, like you said, there's some roles that are assigned to you as the youngest. And there are roles that are assigned to me as the oldest and the only girl, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and believe cool. me, I do some of them very, very well, like bossing <laughs> people around and leading. And <laughs> yes, I'm very good at those things. Yeah. Um, but then again, some of the roles are ones that we choose. Some are given to us. And then some roles are big ones and some are small ones. And I think we can get consumed by what the world is telling us we are. And sometimes it gets so confusing that we lose who we think we are, to be honest, (laughs) you know? And I think also that changes, you know, who you are as a high schooler is different than who you are as a college kid. And then you get married and then you have uh, get to be a mom. And then I think by the time you get to be a mom, you're like, where did that girl go? That girl that I, I was, so who am I now? And our culture takes care of that in self care, you know, like take some time and have, you know, self care because for that one hour, I don't know. Maybe you feel like yourself finally. Like for me, it's gym. Like going to the gym for that hour and a half, I feel like myself (laughs) because it's just me. So what do you tell women in your book and and when you're speaking with women one-on-one about who do they think they are? Well, the core, the root of that message is true for all of us who know God, and that is who you are, is an image bearer Mm. of our God. And our God is three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We have been created with love by the Father. And there's a lot to learn about his great love for us, which is permanent and um, eternal, um, forgiving, kind. Jesus, when he lived on earth, lifted women up. He elevated them. He showed women value. Mm. I talk about the Samaritan woman and how he lifted her up. And she was a down and outer. She was um, an outcast in her culture. Yeah. And he lifted her up, touched her heart, and valued her and pointed her to his father. And then there's the Holy Spirit, who is a person and who empowers us for life ministry. And God has, so God has created us with love. He has valued us and shown us that we have a significant role to play and He has given us gifts in order to live out that role um, and and be empowered by his spirit for a supernatural supernatural, uh, uh, results Mm -hmm. that we couldn't produce just in our own, on our own. Yeah. So... um, that's where it starts. That's where your value comes from. Be rooted in your identity as a child of God, created with love, right. valued and empowered for life and ministry. Hmm. And then you add some layers to that, meaning you understand that you're designed uniquely. You have talents, you have spiritual gifting, you have different capacities yeah, and you mentioned different seasons of life. So you live out who God made you to be in different seasons of life. Um, when, when you are raising little ones in the home, you may not have the capacity to engage outside your little nest yeah Uh, that you have later on when your kids are up and off at school and you have more flexibility in your schedule so you can engage in a different way Mm. that doesn't mean your gifts and talents change it just means things ebb and flow over time okay 
How do we do that? If it's so important to know who we are in Christ, right? And it's so important to make sure that, that we are answering that question, who do you think you are? How, what does it look like to do that more than just that hour or for me, like that time at the gym? Like that's not, okay, that, that's an escapism really is what it is because yeah, it's giving me health great. It's keeping my body healthy, but it's not really helping me answer that question. You know, who are you? Who do you think you are? Because the truth is I'm not going to be an Olympic weightlifter. (laughs) Like it's just not in the cards for me. So what is, how do we figure that out? If we find ourselves saying, well, that'd be great, but I don't have time for that. Well, I think I know this sounds trite, but you make time for what's important. Mm. And um, you are, it is important to fill your mind with the truth and root out wrong thinking, Mm. ideas you have about who you are and how you matter in this life. Um, You're not valuable because you're a mom, although that's an important job and it's a very valuable job. You are value because you are created in God's image. You are an image bearer and you have been called to live out um, the truth of who God is through your gifting and talents. Hmm. And you're gonna do that no matter what time of the day it is or what year it is. Um, he's, doesn't it make sense to you that if God has given you a gift, he would like you to use it? 100%. So um, I have a gift You have a gift. One of my spiritual gifts, primary gifts, I would say, would be teaching. Mm -hmm. Well, um, when I was raising my boys, who was I teaching them? Probably couldn't help it because (laughs) that's my gifting. Right. Right. You know? Um, And my husband, bless his heart, um, is patient with my uh, need to always be teaching something. <laughs> it comes out of me. I can't help it. Honey, if you would just do it this, this way, way, it would work a little better for you. And he can be really patient with me. And I know I could be really annoying at times. So there's actually a way you can use your gifts that's very positive. And sometimes mm-hmm. you're misusing your gifting. Right. And we have to beware of that. And if but, you have the gift of teaching, like I also do, and your husband has the gift of service. Yeah. So he's doing something with the heart of service. And then yeah. you go and teach him how to do it better. In case you're wondering, that doesn't end up well. <laughs> no, that doesn't work out well. No. No. And you know what the scriptures say, I think it's, I was just looking at this this morning. It says, uh, I do not want you to be ignorant of your, of spiritual gifts. Mm. And I thought, you know, that's part of the problem is a lot of times we're ignorant about spiritual gifting, who, what they are, what kinds of gifts we have and how to invest them wisely. Mm -hmm. But But no, being yourself means walking in the truth of who God made you to be all the time, whether you're working out in the gym or at home or in the workplace outside the home. I love that you say you make time for what's important to you because I think it's really easy to say, well, I just don't have time for that. I'd say that's probably my number one excuse. And, um, you know, my husband's really good to say, well, if you care about it, you'll make time. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I know that's true. I really do. (laughs) But are there some, if if someone's at that point where they're like, this is important to me, this is, 
what are the practical steps that they can take other than maybe figuring out what their gifts are, as you just said. So that would be a good place to start figuring out what your spiritual gifts are and what your talents are so that you know where God maybe has begun to give you giftings to serve. But how can they go on that journey um, that's not going to college and creating their own degree <laughs> like <Yeah>. you did? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, you know the old saying, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Yes. You just do a little bit. You just have to do a little bit. You don't have to mm. eat the whole elephant on any one given day mm. or in any one given week. Yeah. You want to make progress. Um, I have a little phrase that I've, I've used before that a friend gave to me and she said, progress, not perfection. Oh, and I like that. It's like, you just want to move forward. Mm -hmm. You want to move into the truth. You want to live the truth. It's yeah. so important to start your day with the Lord, even if it's just waking up and welcoming, welcoming him into your life on that particular day. Mm -hmm. It's so important to embrace the truth of God's word, to get it into your head and get it into your heart. And gradually your wrong thinking is replaced by right thinking. Hmm. It's so important to connect what you're thinking with what you're doing. It will, the hmm. doing comes out of the right thinking. Hmm. Um, steps yeah discover your gifts do something yeah do something get engaged um god's word tells us we're a body of believers and we need to be connected to one another there's a verse in hebrews 10 one of my favorite verses do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together mm. in this day of pandemic um and and social distancing <laughs> um, the world has been the enemy of the church is trying to drive us apart. You know, our, our Zoom meeting does meet a purpose, but there's nothing like being together with people. Yeah. And, and uh, my friend Sandra, who was so important to me in the early years of my Christian life, there was nothing like being together with a person where you pray with them and you talk with them and you search the scriptures together. Um, it's, it's critical. Mm -hmm. I've encouraged women over the years, um, women, men, doesn't matter if you're breathing and you know, the Lord, you should be engaged in the local church mm. and you should get involved serving somehow or other. When people are trying to figure out their gifting, I say, get involved do something. You'll because find out real quick what is and what isn't your gift. <laughs> exactly. I do not do well teaching kids. <laughs> Same I with go, me. I get it. <laughs> I go from one extreme to the other. I either let them do whatever they want and they're, everybody's out of control or I'm too firm. Okay. <laughs> and nobody has any fun. So I don't know how to get in that happy middle. Yeah. Um, so I tried that out once and it was a disaster. It's like, okay, that is not something I can do. Right. I've done one of everything in the church over the years mm. and by process of elimination, you see personal inclination, What, boy, I wasn't the greatest at that, but I'd really like to try it again. I'd like mm. to do that again. I haven't. And then you have that inner sense of, of, um, affirmation i guess you could say yeah. that yeah that was right and then there's outward affirmation other other people say that really ministered to me or that was really helpful to me um i remember when the first few times i was asked to lead a small group or teach a class i went to my friend and i said oh do you think i could do that i'm not sure i could do that she said, yeah, you could do that. Well, she had observed that in me. I had no awareness of my own. Mm -hmm. She had that awareness because she'd observed me and she said, go ahead and try it. And it was scary, but I did it. And there was that affirmation. 
Yeah. And then prayer. And then um, sometimes you t- some people take spiritual inventories. Yeah. Spiritual inventories to identify gifts can be really helpful. Mm-hmm. But they're not they're not perfect because yeah. they're designed by people. Yeah. So um, that's another way you can begin to refine your understanding of who you are. But, you know, even going back to that need for community, you know, I tell people go online, find yeah. a, find a spiritual gifts inventory, take that test, um, see what it says you are. Uh, that's maybe the first one. Second, go find those scriptures that talk about spiritual gifts and yeah. study them in context. So see what's going on around them, uh, study them in context and see which ones jump out to you. You know, yeah. like for me, mercy is not there. It's right. just not, <laughs> right? But teaching is something that I have seen God use even since I was a little kid. And yeah. um, over and over um, in my life. And then once you've studied it for yourself, you've taken, you know, a test just to kind of help maybe point you in, in a direction if you're really unsure then go and talk to your friends and your family. Go and talk yeah. to your small group or a church leader that knows you really well and say, I'm trying to identify my spiritual gifts. And I did this and this is what I think they are. Would you, exactly you said, affirm that or would you disagree with that? Um, and I think that there are, there's gifts and then there's talents, right? right? And I think that can be confusing too. So I'm a musician, right. but my musical, you know, my musical giftings are talents. It's not my, um, right. my gifting. And so right. I have been able to be in different ministries in the church, like be in the music ministry, um, which that leans more towards my gifting of encouragement because yeah. there is nothing more encouraging than to stand up. It's a, it's a blessing. I know that I have that a lot of people don't get to stand up and watch the congregation as they worship. There is nothing better. It is amazing. But that leans more towards that gifting. And then I get the opportunity to go and lead Bible studies. And that leads towards my, my teaching gift. Right. Um, right. But it, I've done the nursery before I've done all of these different things and found out, yeah, I can do that for a week, but please don't make me do that every week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. Yeah. So, well, um, you also brought up the the word talents. Mm. And a lot of times people get confused about the difference between gifting and talents. Yeah. And talents are something that you're born with. It, mm-hmm. It's kind of in your genes. You know, you mentioned musical ability. Well, that's that's a talent. And, and people use the word gift. Well, she has a really gift. She has a beautiful singing voice. What a special gift. Well, it is a gift because God gave it to you. But yeah. it, we're not. That's we're differentiating between spiritual gifting and natural talents. Yeah. Um, I've known people who have, well, one of my seminary professors was an interesting case <laughs> regarding spiritual gifting because he said before he became a Christian, he was, he was shy, did not like to be in front of people and he was, he was not a public speaker at all. He was given the spiritual gift of teaching. And oh. when he became a Christian, he suddenly, and suddenly's in quotes, because you know, it's a prog- progression of growth. Um, he was called to be a teacher, hmm. which was very not who he was naturally. Yeah. He's definitely a, a, a gifted teacher, hmm. but he would, he would make that differentiation that uh, his, his spiritual gifting didn't really fit who he was uh, naturally, but it, be, it, uh, it was in a gift that, that was given and was empowered in his usage. A lot of times with people um, their, their natural talents and their gifting kind of complement each other. Yeah. Like for me, I would say, okay, I remember my husband, and I used to talk years ago before we even knew the Lord or anything, we'd say, well, what do we want to do with our lives? And I said, I don't know. 
He said, well, what do you like to do? I said, I like to talk. <laughs> I like to talk. I know I like to talk. I didn't know how to make a living doing that. Yeah. You know, you think about, oh, be a radio announcer. Well, actually, I did for a time study theater in college. Okay. Because I was trying to figure out who the heck I was, right? Well, when I became a believer and I was given the gift of teaching, that kind of complemented mm. my, I like to talk because in order to be a teacher, you do have to be able to communicate with people. <laughs> so that kind right. of went together. Right, right. So gifting talents. Yeah. Um, I was going to say something earlier that I, I didn't mention. And that is, I think there's, there's nothing as fulfilling as operating in your spiritual gifting. Oh, and feeling yeah. that sense of internal uh, joy and peace, a sense of I'm doing what God made me to do. Yeah. Yeah. That is, that is fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, part yeah. of the reason, too, is that spiritual gifts are outward focused. So the teaching of others, the encouraging of others, the serving of others uh, and the, the shepherding of others, whatever it might be. And so they're they're others focused. And I think that's another reason why there's nothing more fulfilling is because the attention is not on you, you, you. It's on yeah. them. Well, them, that them. makes sense. That makes sense. The Lord wouldn't wouldn't lead you to be a self focused narcissist he would <laughs> lead you to be other focused right right so right. i think that's something that i'm always trying to teach my sons is to be others focused but at 4 and 7 they're yeah. it's a little <laughs> early <laughs> i know but we try um and so can you speak to those of us that are parents there's a lot of parents that listen to the show and yeah. how can we help our kids to begin to identify uh, who, or begin to find their identity in Christ. Wow. Well, let them be who God made them to be. First of all, don't try to force a square peg into a round hole. Mm -hmm. If, if your child is a verbal child, like I was find, um, positive ways for them to be able to express their verbalness mm, okay for example um make wonderful signs that say good morning you've been created in god's image mm -hmm. walk in that truth today you are an image bearer which means respect yourself and others and respect others because they're also image bearers. Mm. So it has to do with respect too. Yeah. So women who tend to be in abusive relationships have not valued themselves. Mm. And that's a whole nother topic for another podcast. But uh, the truth is it is, wrong before God to allow yourself to be devalued by someone else mm. yeah so you want to teach your kids by demonstrating you demonstrate to them they're valuable yeah they're created in God's image um, nurture their talents um, experts will tell you that about the age of 10 um, a child will display some natural talents Okay. I don't know what it would be, whether it's art, music, um, like I said, talking, yeah. um, uh, rollerblading, you know, physical ability. Uh, a child who at 10 who um, is a bookworm is very well may not be um, an athlete down the road. Okay. They may, they may not. Um, it, but nurture that God-given talent, mm. embrace it and say, that's a great thing. Yeah. Look at how God has made you. How wonderful. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you shared already about, uh, Sandra was her name. That was your, um, yeah. just, you know, the woman. Yeah, who I never told you her last name. I know it was Sandra though, but no, say, yeah, we don't need to know her last name. <laughs> 
<laughs> but you did talk about Sandra. Um, one of the things that we always ask all of our guests uh, before we finish our conversation is that, you know, the distance discipleship is so important and it's so important to live in community. You and I talked about this and that, or about that in this conversation. Um, yep. Who is it that helped you along in your journey? Was it Sandra? Was there somebody else? Oh, totally. Totally Sandra mm -hmm. in the beginning. Mm hmm. Um, that woman who met me in the front of the theater, um, they moved shortly after that. And they, she hooked me up with the church that I started attending, a little Baptist church in uh, Oregon. Okay. But I never really got to know her very well. But she was one of God's instrument, instruments that was there for a purpose for a moment in time. Yeah. Um, Fred and I have been involved in small groups almost continuously since we came to Christ in the late 70s, mid to late 70s. Okay. Um, we need that body life. And, and some people have a negative small group experience and they pull away from it and say, I'll never do that again. That was bad, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, that one event may have been a, a bad experience for you, but don't pull away. Try it again with, with other people. I mean, you, you know? did, right? That, you, you tried yeah. it again. <laughs> Absolutely. I've had a, a couple of losers and a number, <laughs> a number of winners over the years. Most, right. Mostly good experiences. Mm. But see, it's people, people aren't perfect. Yeah. I'm not perfect. Um, let's accept the fact that we're not perfect and we make mistakes mm -hmm. and um, allow God to use other people to bring us into our next stage of growth. Um, who else helped me? A couple of the men at the seminary took me under their wing and kind of nurtured my teaching gift. I was terrified to start teaching in the seminary. I, I didn't want to teach in a graduate school kind of freaked me out but they said they said they really challenged me they said um you need to walk in the authority of the gifting that god has given you wow like, Ooh, wow i have to go home and think about that i had to buy a book called the literally the title of the book is the courage to teach because i was yep. afraid i i was I was terrified to do it and I had to work myself through it, but I did because I believed God was calling me and he wanted me to grow in that area. Mm. So I kept, I kept persevering, even though it was um, uncomfortable to have to learn how to do something in front of people. Yeah. That's what teaching is, right? I think it's constantly, first of all, you're learning in front of your students and you're okay with making mistakes because you're going to make a mistake. Exactly. And how do you handle that? They're going to learn as much from the way that you handle that as they are from, you know, your days where you don't oh, make yeah. mistakes. Oh yeah. Yeah. I tell people I'm a recovering perfectionist. <laughs> See, and I, mean, I am like so far from a perfectionist that, you know, as far as my life, but yeah. Yeah. So it was just like the Lord saying, you don't need to, you don't need to show up. Perfect. You're yeah. learning, you're growing. Okay. This <laughs> is so painful. But okay. I'm going to do it. And that's how I began to do it. And so mm -hmm. some of, a couple of these seminary professors really, and I don't want this to sound prideful, but I was just scratching my head and working so hard one day in the library on a paper I had to do. And one of my professors, one of these two men that was such a, a help to me, walked into the library where I was. And he said, and he was from Texas. So he had called me Ms. B. He didn't <laughs> call, me, call me Ms. B. Uh -huh. How are you doing, Ms. B? And I looked at him like, oh, I'm okay, I'm okay. I'm working on this paper. And he looked at me like this and he said, you have no idea how smart you are. Mm. And that just made me sit back. It's like, what, what is he talking about? Mm. I didn't see that in myself because of all those wrong messages I had heard growing up. And I, there was an opportunity where I talked about rooting out lies. God was saying, no, time to get rid of that one. Yeah, yeah. 
this is who I've made you to be. Walk in it. And I think that's a good reminder for us that if if you have this feeling about somebody or if you, you know, God has allowed you to see something inside of them, one of the best things that we can do is to affirm them with that fact because most likely they don't see it in themselves. Even if they've been told, even if you're not the first one to tell them that, uh, right. which if you are, what a blessing for them. But God has told you that about them or revealed that about them to you so that you can go and encourage them with that because we, we all need to hear it. You know, I know you said like, this isn't prideful. No, we all need those moments. Where we're like, really? Like, thank you. You know, it's the same thing with yeah. your children saying yeah. you are handsome. God has yeah. given you such a smart brain. Um, yeah. You exactly. are beautiful. Wow. God created you so wonderfully and, and affirming those things that God has created in your kids. Yeah. That need for affirmation doesn't go away because we pass the age of 16. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, hello, look at me. I'm, it took me a long, long time to embrace who God made me to be a mm -hmm. long, long time. And uh, uh, you said, how can parents help their kids hold up a mirror to them because we don't see ourselves the way God sees us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. And we need to encourage one another by holding up that mirror saying, no, see, this is what I see in you. Yeah. I see you have this gift. Yeah. And you should use it. Yeah. I love it. Well, before we go, um, and we're going to go ahead and put this in the show notes, but what is that email that everybody can um, contact you at? Well, it's my first name is Kristen with a K, K R I S T I N. Mm -hmm at live, L-I-V-E, the number four, impact.com. Get the meaning of that email address? Live, I do. Kristen at liveforimpact.com. Mm. You want your life to count for something? You want to have an impact? Hook yourself up with the Lord. Walk with him. Be who he made you to be. Mm. And you will make an impact. Yeah. Well, I can't thank you enough for all that you've shared with us and just the encouragement to make sure that we're living out our gifts and our talents, living out the life that God created for us and not just assuming the roles that other people have decided for us, but instead figuring out who God created us to be. Thank you for that today. All right. You are welcome. It's good to be with you.